I have completely or almost completely stopped caring about getting a job. And when I say that, I'm not saying that I don't want to work because I do want to work. But I'm saying I'm so tired of applying that the care that I had before, I don't give a shit anymore. And honestly, it's by far one of the best things I've ever done by not giving a shit because I have been able to be less like stressed out and not depressed anymore. Like I've been basically stressed for the last seven and a half months. I've been depressed for the last seven and a half months over getting a job. And I've made a video previously about how hard it is to get a job and I was very emotional, I was crying. And I I definitely, I, I believe my feelings are valid even in that video. But right now where I'm at, is that I'm tired of obsessing over getting a job. I'm tired of worrying about money. I'm just so tired. And my thing is, is that I know that I'm good enough to get a job, but these companies are overlooking me. And really how I feel is that's your fucking loss. It really is. It really is. And that's okay. Because I'm not losing out nothing when you tell me no or you, or you ghost me. You don't say nothing to me after I applied to a job or had an interview. I'm not tripping because at the end of the day, I am enough and I'll be fine whether I have a job or not. You know, I think the most demoralizing thing about job hunting and not being able to get a job is that even the jobs you don't even want, don't even want you back. It's like when you kind of convince yourself to like someone and then they reject you, it's like, what the fuck just happened? Something that I don't think a lot of people talk about is the emotional and mental impacts of interviewing. If you are struggling with mental health problems, depression, anxiety, etc., it is going to be so much harder for you to interview successfully. Or if you're struggling with symptoms of burnout from your current job, it can just be too much to add that mental load to what you're currently experiencing. And these days, companies make you jump through hoops in order to get to those final stages of interviews and the offer stage. I currently work in the tech industry, and it's not uncommon to have six different steps in the interview process. So I'm just here to say that your health is the number one priority. Any company would be lucky to have you. And listen to your gut. If it doesn't feel right the first couple of interviews, don't keep interviewing with that company. Welcome back to my channel. I'm back with another video and I am here to talk about my experience with the job interview process. Now I have made several, several, several videos on this channel specifically about my job hunt post graduation. Even jobs that people don't necessarily want like I don't know, working at the bank or working at a restaurant or working in customer service, you know, like I feel like jobs in general aren't easy to come by. Like even a couple of years ago when I was looking for just just any old regular part time job, it didn't even have to be anything in my field or anything super great. Like I just was looking for anything. It still was a hard thing. I mean, I even applied to fast food places and couldn't get hired. When I tell you I have not had a lick of happiness, excitement, like any positive emotion that you can think of when it comes to getting your degree, um, I haven't felt that. The days leading up to my graduation, I just felt dread. I think the root of it, honestly, is the fact that I'm, I'm not where I wanna be in life. Entry level jobs today are not actually entry level. I'm gonna be honest, the, the value of a degree is like, is, is damn near nothing at this point. I'm honestly just being real, like, the experience that you have in college is just not cutting it anymore. You're literally telling me that go ahead and spend four years getting your degree. And then once you get out of college, we want you to spend five more years working for free or working for very little until you're worth an entry level position that's barely even paying bills in the first place. And so since like you have rent going up, chicken wings going up, gas going up, but guess what's not going up? salaries but yeah as you guys can see like the job market right now is horrible 
horrible for new graduates. And I would even go as far as to say that the job market hates new graduates. I think it's just really unfortunate because again, it's like you're sold this dream that as long as you work hard and you do well in school and you do all these extracurricular activities that's gonna get you somewhere. And if I'm gonna be completely honest and blunt and transparent, it's not. I was one of the many, many people that you see, you know, talking about this on TikTok, on LinkedIn, that, you know, was fed a false <laughs> dream that all you have to do is get into a good college, go to college, get your degree, maybe pick up some, you know, leadership roles while you're in college, you know, be on a couple executive boards, you know, get some experience through that. And, you know, you'll be good to go. You know, you get your, your job and then everything will will be up from there and um, a lot of us are realizing that we were lied to and things have definitely changed i have my literal business marketing degree was a, i've been applying to marketing jobs fucking for weeks now and the, the pay cut is insane insane i'm a 20 almost 25 year old my birthday soon almost 25 year old chick going against you know corporate ass america people with so much experience. All I got is my degree. You know, people say, get your degree, but then they don't talk about how you need experience. The degree was the experience. And a lot of college graduates are struggling to find work. This has been a struggle that's been going on since literally 2020, since the pandemic, and it doesn't seem to be getting any better. Um, or maybe, I, I'm not sure um, what the class of 2023, what their experience has been like. I haven't seen a ton of them really complain too much, but definitely class of 2022, 21, 2020, I've seen, you know, a lot of us talking about kind of that pandemic era and how that's kind of affected things. Because, you know, I've also talked about to the importance of internships, right? You know, one thing that I really regret is not doing more internships because that seems to be what's keeping me from from getting a job now and I'm now forced to settle for internships with the whole degree for the sake of trying to get the experience to get me to that full-time role but what I've seen a lot of people bring up too is that in in that time frame right so let's say that you were somebody that was graduating you know around when the pandemic was happening there weren't a, a ton of internships available a lot of internships like just weren't even there to do because of the pandemic there were so many companies that were shutting down down. Yes, a lot of them went remote, but just the access to internships decreased heavily around that time. So there's even an argument to be made that there are a certain number of college graduates who they didn't even have the same access to internships as there are today. And so overall, it's just been a very hard time for college graduates and just even beyond, you know, like I can say that as well. Again, I've seen in the lot just more so on LinkedIn about how even people that are are in mid to senior level roles. I'm talking about people who have been in their careers for like 10 plus years. Even they're struggling to find a job. You see a lot of people getting laid off from companies like Microsoft and Google and they can't even seem to find a job. Even though I would like to make the argument that a lot of them actually do get in the door a lot quicker than someone who maybe didn't work for those companies. Cause something I noticed too, right? Is even on LinkedIn, it's just a quick side note. I noticed that on LinkedIn when you go on there right you know you'll see every now and again someone will make a post saying hey I just got laid off from this company here's all of my experience I would love for someone to give me an opportunity I notice that when people get laid off from big companies like again Microsoft Google Facebook I notice they tend to get a lot of traction and they typically land a role much quicker as opposed to someone that might make the same post but maybe they didn't get laid off from Google maybe they got laid off from a, a mid-sized company maybe a company with only like 15 employees they typically don't even get pushed into the algorithm and a lot of times they get overlooked for someone that worked at a bigger company and so just a lot of politics that goes into the job the job hunt but I wanted to get on here and talk about my experience um just as a way to kind of inform people and let people know like what the the job hunting process looks like because whether you're you know still in school or whether you've been at your job for a while you know you might be looking to start looking for other roles so I kind of wanted to get on here and you know I'm like even even if I'm struggling to find a job and I can't seem to land anything, I might as well come on here and maybe help someone else by sharing my experience so that you guys know um, 
you know, what to look for and what to expect when it comes to searching for a job, at least within my field. Again, like, I don't know if the process differs. I'm sure it does differ um, or like how much it differs between industries. So for me, I have been interviewing for roles in the business field. So, you know, marketing, communications, public relations, those are more so the roles that I've been mainly interviewing for. Honestly, it's, it's mostly been communications and PR, surprisingly. Um, because for those of y'all who don't know, I have a degree in marketing. I find that to be my area of expertise and also the area that I'm just the most like interested and passionate about. I love digital marketing. I love social media. Oh, sorry, y'all. There was an ant on my camera and I had to get it. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh, I was talking about the roles that I typically uh interview for. So yeah, like I would say that my area of expertise has definitely been social media. That's mostly what I did in college. And those are the type of roles that I go for because I feel like the, the strongest in that area here. But these companies just do not feel that way. Um, And I've seen stuff talked about that as well, Um, about just the marketing industry in general. Man, like, you know, so here, here's the thing, right? I've been hearing that the marketing industry right now is very unstable and it's just not a good field to go into i've heard people talk about how companies having very unrealistic expectations when it comes to you know digital marketing and social media a lot of companies will hire on a social media manager and not only do they expect every single post that you make to go viral which is literally like not a thing you can't just make something go viral but also they expect you to have the skill set of 10 people in one and I don't know if that's like a budget cut thing I'm sure it is or if it's just them not understanding like all the different pieces and all the different elements of marketing and why it's actually more beneficial to have a marketing department where you have individual people focusing on one area of expertise as opposed to hiring one person that knows how to do 50 million things and so that's kind of where I've been at with this it's like when I'm looking for social media roles even if it's something as small as like a social media assistant which is typically what I go for because I mean and that's the other thing too right I've had people send me social media manager roles LinkedIn will suggest social media manager roles to me based off of the experience that I have listed on my LinkedIn. But I honestly don't think that my chances are high for getting a role like that because it's just, again, these companies expect a lot. But yeah, a lot of the social media roles that are listed, they want you to literally know how to do everything. They want you to know how to do graphic design, copywriting, email marketing, SEO. Like they just want you to have, oh, and video editing as well. Like they want you to have a variety of skill sets that typically when you look at a company like a Google or a Microsoft they have one person for each thing like they have one person that does social media they have one person that designs all the graphics they have one person that you know does the captions they have one person that you know um you know does the video they have one person that's in charge of emails and that's it and I know I just said Microsoft I don't know if Microsoft actually does have one person for each of those things but basically what I'm trying to say is that more of like the bigger like companies and agencies they understand the the importance of having one person specialized in one area and I feel like that's how they should be going about hiring people because I'll even see other types of roles listed as well like administrative assistant and you would think an administrative assistant is just someone that does administrative roles whether it's you know emailing answering phone calls uh booking meetings like administrative stuff but I'll see uh, a job listing for administrative assistant and then the job requirements are giving social media manager on top of administrative tasks and so it's like they really want you to be 20 people in one for a very very low salary and you know but it's it's just the game right now and so I am lucky enough that again with the experience that I've had in college as well as the little bit of professional experience that I've had and also just my own personal interests I have a lot of those skill sets and I have experience you know with a lot of those different things but because I haven't been doing it in a professional capacity for five plus years I tend to get overlooked and I tend to get told you just don't have the experience for this role uh, I'm sorry I just hallucinated what a gram a point five, a point three. Entry level jobs shouldn't require three years worth of experience. That is absolute, it, that, that doesn't make sense. How can it be a graduate 
entry level job when you need three years experience. I don't get it. But what's funny is that a lot of the interviews that I have received have been for PR and communications. And that's not, <laughs> that's not really my lane. That's not really my area of expertise. But for some reason, those are the roles that I mostly get interviewed for. And it's just like, I mean, PR is cool. Like when I had my fellowship, like I didn't mind it. Like I actually had like learned to enjoy it. But then over time, I just ended up not liking it more so just because I just didn't like that job. I didn't like some of the people that I worked worked with um but you know PR was cool and so yeah those are mostly the jobs that I tend to interview for but I, I've also in addition to that gotten marketing roles but also a lot of the communication roles that I've gotten interviews for included social media so it really a lot of these roles have just been like multiple industries wrapped into one but anyway getting into my like actual experience with these interviews the interview process in 2023 has been absolutely garbage absolutely garbage everything that you hear about the interview process nowadays is a hundred percent true i'm sorry but there's nothing nothing more frustrating than a job interview okay when i tell you i feel like my energy is like up here and it's like hey hey every time and then you just get ghosted Okay, they'll be like, I'll follow up like next week. And I go in there feeling like, oh, I think I did well. And no, I just like get ghosted on top of that. Okay, what is with companies now wanting like six freaking steps? And this job doesn't offer benefits until six months in. And then they don't even tell you like if you're going to get it or not. Like it's so frustrating because I get it. You're interviewing a company, but like also like they're interviewing you and then you're interviewing them. And it's just a lot of work and it's like really frustrating. And I'm like, mm, this is why I quit my job last year. This is why people don't want to work for y'all companies. Listen to this process that I was just put through by this company. October 6th, a recruiter reached out to me asking for my cover letter resume. October 10th, I had my first round interview. Shit goes smooth. I don't hear back until October 18th saying, hey, we want to schedule the next interview. October 23rd, I had my second round interview. They don't hit me back until November 2nd saying, hey, we want to schedule you for November 7th for an in-person interview. November 7th, I've been interviewing for a month and I'm still interviewing. They took so long that I can't even work for them anymore because I've already accepted another offer. What the fuck is y'all doing? Y'all process is nuts. It, it's just, it's honestly, it's ridiculous. It's tedious. And even just hearing too how a lot of companies are putting people through the interview process with no intent to hire anybody. A lot of these companies, they already know who they're going to pick and who they're going to hire before they even start interviewing people. So they're just wasting everybody's time. Like it's honestly just so bad. So basically um, every single job interview process that I've been in since post you know college graduation which was May 2022 it has consisted of several interviews and when I say several <laughs> I don't mean you know two I don't mean three I mean I've gone through a four-part interview process several different times the least amount of interviews that I've ever done for a job is three three not one, not two, three. And that's of course, if you get through every single round, which luckily I can say that like 95% of the interviews that I go through, I tend to make it to the final round. There might've been maybe one or two that I didn't. Um, Actually, there was one recently where I didn't get to the final round and I'll talk about that one. Um, But yeah, for the most part, if I make it to the final round where I literally talk to the CEO or whoever is like the the main person in charge they are usually the third or fourth person if not the fifth person that I talk to before they essentially decline me and it's really infuriating and again as someone that suffers with social anxiety it's like literally the worst thing in the world and it's really hard to like talk about these things with like the people in my life because I honestly feel like they just don't get it mostly because a lot of them just don't suffer from social anxiety like I do when you you have like really intense anxiety especially when it comes to these job interviews the job interview process is not easy a lot of people look at job interviews like it's just a conversation like it's just you know oh you're interviewing them too but for 
me, it's just not like that at all. Every single interview that I do, I get physically ill. I want to throw up. I'm like shaking really bad. Like it physically takes a toll on me. And then even on the, the mental aspect, right? Let's say I was offered to interview with a company, right? Let's say they emailed me today. Today is Friday, November 3rd. I plan on posting this the same day, but I may or may not be able to. But yeah, let, let's just let's just say that, right? Let's say they're like, okay, next week on Wednesday, we'll interview you. Literally from today up until next Wednesday, that's all my mind is focused on. I can't focus on anything else. I can't like fully enjoy anything else. Like my mind is just fixed on that interview preparing for it researching the company researching the person that's interviewing me all my days is con is consumed with the the thought and the fear of the interview coming up and people don't understand that a lot of people have never even experienced that when it comes to an interview they got they may get a little bit nervous like the day of or like right before but no for me it's like however many days is leading up to that interview it, it literally consumes me up until that point and again it's like it's me just being just anxious and just feeling sick and just being like worried and I don't even get me started on the day of me having to force myself out of bed me feeling very like weak me like essentially like dragging myself to the computer like it's a whole thing and then people also think too oh well once you do the interview you feel fine right not really I mean I feel relieved that it's over but now I have anxiety on you know waiting for their response and like I almost have to like physically and mentally recover even after the interview and so imagine going through all of that mental and physical uh turmoil just to get told no people don't understand Stand like it again for someone like me that suffers with anxiety real bad especially when it comes to interviews it just it takes a lot out of me mentally and physically to do an interview then to do multiple interviews and then just get told no I'm sorry for me it's not as easy as just oh we'll just keep applying just keep interviewing it it's 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 just like it's torture like interviewing for me is pure torture and for me to be going on like a year and a half now now and I'm still going through this again it's like for me it's not just as easy as just oh just get up and do it and I'm, another thing too right because for me to again put myself through all of that to interview with a job the job itself has to be worth it in my opinion and I hate when people tell me like oh like you know j like just just take the interview and just see what happens if I already have in my mind that the, the job's not going to work whether it's location whether it's pay whether it's like certain rules rules which I have a story about that as well if I know more than likely I'm not gonna go through with this job I'm not going to interview because again it's not like it's not just another conversation for me it's okay I have to be physically ill and all of that like I'm not trying to do that for a job that I'm not set on wanting and people don't understand that either but anyway let me let me <laughs> let me get back to the topic at hand so yes nowadays it is true if you are going through an interview process and the company could be small big or in between prepare to do I want to say it, honestly it's rare to even do two interviews I would say prepare for three prepare for three interviews prepare for an interview with the hiring manager prepare for an interview with one or more people that would be on your team that you'll be working with and then prepare for a final interview with the head of that company that's how most of my interviews go it's usually hiring manager first then I have to meet the meet the team that I would be working with and then I meet like the head person in charge and people typically say if you make it to the CEO interview you basically have the job but that's not true I've I've had multiple interviews with multiple CEOs who told me directly to my face we would love to have you didn't get the job I've also seen that too on LinkedIn I've heard people say that they interviewed with the CEO everything went well then they like just got ghosted by the company like it's it's honestly insane but yeah just make sure that you are preparing yourself for multiple interviews I think the days of getting one interview and then getting the job I think those days are over or at the very least it's going to be a minute until we get back to that and so 
secondly, another thing that has been very apparent with these job interviews are like scenario based type of questions, which I will say this is probably where I struggled the most. Granted, there have been some situations where I've been able to finesse like a really good answer because now that I have more job experience, I'm able to pull from that to use in my answers. And so I feel like I've been doing better now that I've you know had like a job here and there under my belt but if you're coming like fresh out of college and a lot of your experience is from like again like executive leadership roles in like your club or if it's from like group project stuff I mean obviously still use it if that's all you have but it might be hard to convince the hiring manager that you have the experience needed to handle certain situations when it comes to like that type of environment because for me right again like at least like when I was in college and even like maybe high school there are certain questions that like I always prepare for and one thing that I've realized is that none of those questions ever get asked in the interview and the type of questions that I'm talking about is like um tell me about yourself which I do still get those questions pretty often but even just trying to figure out like how to answer that can be tricky because there are some companies that want you to just go into like your professional history but I've noticed more and more that interviewers are now starting to get more personal with their questions and you know what they like want to know about you and again it's hard to navigate because it's just like do you give them like an honest answer or do you give them a answer that would you know fit what they would look for for that role you know what I mean like for instance almost every single interview I've been in someone has asked me what are your hobbies like what are your hobbies outside of work outside of professional stuff like what do you like to do on the weekends I've actually gotten ask that question a few times and the reason why it trips me up is because again I don't know whether or not to give them an honest answer or an answer that sounds professional I've even seen people talk about this on reddit you know about how to go about answering that question and someone actually put like a really helpful tip that I'll actually share on here someone said that when you're answering the hobby question you want to make it seem like you enjoy being around other people because if you put a hobby out there that's very like isolated they may look at that a certain way they want to know that you are someone that can be social and that can work with other people and that enjoys being around other people and if your hobbies are like oh reading a book or knitting they might look at that as okay this person likes to be reserved and stay to themselves they may not be fit for this company culture and again that's the type of stuff that like I don't always think about and that caused me to overthink about my answer because to be, to be for real right if someone asked me you know just what are your hobbies video games um I enjoy online shopping stuff like that but I don't like but video games can be looked at as childish so it's just like I don't know if I want to tell a hiring manager that my favorite hobby is to play video games so I might make something up like oh yeah I enjoy listening to podcasts which I, I actually do enjoy listening and watching podcasts I watch podcasts all the time but just giving them an answer that kind of sounds like professional I guess you know whether again it's like oh I enjoy listening to podcasts or going out to brunch or you know what I mean like something that sounds like I don't know like something that other professional people would do you know what I mean and so it's just like I've noticed that hiring managers more and more are getting like way more personal with with their questions that they really want to know like you and who you are which I think is okay to a certain degree but I would hate for someone to decide if they want to hire me or not based off of the things that I'm into or based on my personality as opposed to can I do the job and can I do it well and it goes back to this whole issue that I've noticed and I'm going to talk about this when I finally make a video about why I quit my last two jobs it's this idea that people eat live and breathe their job bro like you don't really see it like among Gen Z but the older generations like millennials baby boomers their entire life and their entire being is in these jobs it's the only way they socialize it's the only way they make friends it's the only way that they have like fun is through like you know company events like it's their whole entire existence and I feel like they look for people like that in these roles and it's like if you don't you know fit that that sometimes they'll like treat you bad or they just won't hire you and so I feel like it kind of goes into that where it's like people are looking for other people to join their company to be friends with and to you know be involved in their personal lives and I've been noticing that 
more and more even in the hiring process so another aspect of the job hunting process that has popped up a lot are these take-home tests and assessments credit card id i'm so freaking pissed i'm not doing a single thing i don't like <laughs> sorry i'm not doing a single thing i don't like sorry about it I think that take-home assignments are um, exploitive and if we're going to do them, we should pay people. Um, asking people to do work outside of work to get work is something that people who have time can do and people with time are typically people with money, which are people with privilege. Now, people have a lot of iffy opinions about this. A lot of people are of the belief that if a company makes you do a take-home test or an assessment to evaluate if you can do the role or not. A lot of people say to just decline and not do it. Some people say that you should, you know, request compensation. But to me, if you request to be paid for a take-home test, a lot of companies are not intending on doing that. A lot of them don't pay for it. So I feel like at that point, you're kind of just <laughs> ruining your chances by even asking that. So I just would prefer that you just to say no to it as opposed to asking for payment i think i've heard like in a very few scenarios that people have paid or gotten paid to do take home tests but for the most part they're not trying to do that um but then on the flip side you have people who are desperate for a job that is like you know what if this little assessment is going to get me to finally getting a job I'll just do it. But the issue arises when you're doing so many of them and not getting any results. And that has been my issue. So out of all the jobs that I have interviewed for, I would say it's been like a good, good handful that have made me do assessments. And even the ones that I didn't like make it, you know, all the way through the end of the process, I was told like, hey, if we decide to continue on, you will be given a assessment to do i will say that almost every single job that i have interviewed for made me do a take-home test they make you do some type of assessment because they want to see you know okay if we hire you can you do the the things that we're hiring you to do. And again, it's being more and more looked down upon by candidates, but also it's becoming more and more popular. And so that's why I kind of wanted to come on here again and let you guys know like what's happening and what to expect because yeah, a lot of companies are now making it to where not only do you have to interview with 500 people and do these long, gruesome interview processes, but then they also want you to take a test to prove that you can do the role as if you didn't prove that enough in the interview process. Process. And so for me, a lot of the, the take home assessments, it, it varies. Some of them have been relatively quick and not too much, but others have been very long and lengthy and tedious and i've also noticed too a lot of these tests are not like quick 10 to 15 minute assignments like these assignments usually take like a couple hours maybe even a whole day because i think what happens is they basically give you what they would give you on a normal work day to see if you can handle it and they you know reference reference that as a as a take-home assignment right and so let me tell you i have had a time with these assessments and again, some people say that if a company makes you do all that, especially after interviewing for a long time, just don't do them. And looking back, given the fact that I didn't get the jobs anyway, I kind of wish I would have just said, you know, no. And I can't even sit here confidently today and say that I wouldn't do a take home assessment because again, I just I think that's the other thing too, right? The job hunting process feels very just, I don't want to say predatory, but I feel like they, they're taking advantage of people people that are in very desperate situations a lot of people are desperate for work they're desperate for jobs people are struggling people are struggling to pay their bills to pay for groceries and i think a lot of companies are taking advantage of that and they're putting candidates through these grueling interview processes because they can and because they know there is going to be someone out there that is going to be desperate enough to do whatever it is that they need to do to get that job and that also goes in into the take-home assessment so one of the jobs that I uh, interviewed for made me do a take-home assessment, right? And this was like months ago. This assessment
assessment was so overwhelming because I think I had to look up like 50 different articles and pull like links and you know like it's just it was it was a lot it was a lot but that was like the one job that I got and honestly I don't even like calling it a job because it wasn't a job it was a fellowship but and that's the other thing too it's like even for like a fellowship or an internship they expect you to do the most sometimes I'll go you know on LinkedIn or whatever and I'll look for internships as well as jobs and even for internships like they want you to literally do a whole like class assignment for an internship I'm like bro so for that I, w I just won't I just won't like because I already don't want to work internships because I have a whole degree and so it's like if you're gonna make me like answer a whole bunch of like other questions and do a whole bunch of other stuff for the internship I, I just pass on those honestly but yeah let me tell you about this one company now I'm not I'm not gonna name the company I'm not gonna name the company but <laughs> The way they played me and the way that I suspect that they're playing other people is like actually insane. So I interviewed with this social media company. Oh, this was like maybe two or three months ago. I interviewed with them and everything seemed to be going well. Like the hiring manager liked me. And again, I got to the final interview with the CFO of this company right and everything was going well they really were gassing me up bro like gassing me up so much and I'm low-key embarrassed to say this and I know people are going to be like oh Brianta you were stupid for doing that but whatever I the, part of the reason why I went ahead and bought this new laptop is because I was so sure that I was going to get this job because that's how much they were gassing me up but look, anyway I had to do a take-home assessment for this job right now mind you this isn't even a full-time job either it's part-time and so I want to throw that out there as well everything I'm saying in this in this video does not just apply to full-time roles I've also interviewed for a bunch of part-time roles that did all these same things multiple interviews take-home tests for part-time jobs <laughs> like it's it's actually that bad so this was a part-time social media manager role and I was so like excited about it because I'm like this is gonna look so good on my resume you know it's part-time so you know still gonna be able to move out but I'll be making a decent amount of money getting some good experience I feel good about it and essentially the assignment was to create a social media or a um a content calendar they wanted me to create a content calendar they didn't tell me how to do it they didn't tell me like a specific software that they wanted me to do they just told me you know make a content calendar have it be like this many posts like we're looking to post uh two times a day for you know five days and you know just just go for it so i used notion um which is a an app that a lot of people use i used notion to create this calendar and i did everything from top to bottom i created the captions i created graphics for each of these posts and i did it all in notion and the reason why i'm emphasizing that it was a notion is because this company actually already uses notion like within their like company and so that was also a you know point for me because i'm like okay i'm already familiar with software that you guys use in the company so i won't even need like training on it because you know how a lot of times you might work you might work for a job and they use software that you never used before and they have to like train you like during the onboarding process i'm like oh i'm one step ahead because i already know how to use this this software and so when i sent oh, oh <laughs> forgot to mention this content calendar was 20 posts okay it consisted of 20 posts so 20 posts 20 captions 20 graphics all planned out but I was like you know what I, I felt like I felt I felt so good about it I felt so good about it I'm like I know I'm gonna get this job I know it's gonna be worth it but like I, I kid you not y'all like I literally did a full day's worth of work for them for free because I just was I, again desperate and I felt good about the role so I sent over the content calendar to the hiring manager she literally said it was like perfect one of the best she's ever seen she even put a little smiley face in the email like she literally loved it she bragged about it to the CFO because when I had my interview with him he talked about that too he was like oh like I heard really good things like I heard that you know the plan that you came up with was really good like I, I just like everything all the cards seem to have been falling perfectly for me to get this role 
didn't get the role didn't get the role did a 20 post content calendar had really good interviews didn't get the role and i was so upset and confused because i'm just like why were y'all gassing me the whole time making me think that i was going to get this job and the reason why i feel like they may have low-key gotten over on me to get free work is because the job listing is still up they never took it down like you could you yourself could go on there and apply and so there's a part of me that wonders are they keeping this job posting up to to get free content from people that are looking to get a job with them. I wouldn't be surprised. Again, a lot of companies do it. Um, I had a company do, do that to me, actually. It was actually the very first job that I ever had, and I don't talk about it. It's not on my resume because they literally fired me like after a week. Um, but I had worked for this lady who ran a boutique and again, I was a social media manager for her and I literally curated all these designs and graphics for her company. She ended up firing me, didn't pay me what I had worked for and what we had agreed upon, blocked me so I couldn't contact her. And then I caught her trying to recreate my designs and my graphics for her page. And you could tell, cause I mean, one, it was like literally like one for one, but you could tell that like the font was slightly different and like the placement was slightly different. So she tried I tried to copy my graphics that she essentially stole from me because again she hired me to to create graphics for her for her boutique fired me didn't pay me and then blocked me from being able to contact her so I, I she's someone that I don't even like acknowledge because the last thing I want to do is have a hiring manager like try to confirm that I worked for her and then she tried to do me dirty again trying to make it seem like I never worked for her so I just act as if that never even happened but I say all that to say there's a lot of companies out there that are predatory like that and that will try to get free work from people and I think it's just messed up but yeah I, I can name a handful of companies that I interviewed for that literally had me create graphics for them like it was that was like a part of the test like oh hey take this thing and like make it into a graphic put my heart sweat and tears into designing something that I feel is like really good and really high quality and then still don't get the job so yeah I've done a lot of free work just a lot of extraness trying to get a job and just not getting anywhere and so I say all of this to say the interview process in 2023 is is horrible it's gruesome it's very competitive and a lot of these companies are definitely taking advantage of people that are in very desperate situations and they are also wasting people's time again making people go through four five six seven interviews Views, just to be told no ghosting people making people do these take-home assessments and still not giving them the job or still not compensating them for their time like it's actually honestly ridiculous it's tiring and no of course don't give up and know your worth and you know all that but I just really wanted to come on here and talk about my experience just so people can be prepared for what's to come and then you you can decide how you want to move about that right if you don't mind doing the take-home assessments do them um, but if you're someone that's like, eh, no, I'm good. I don't blame you for, you know, just not going for those. Like just being mindful and prepared of how the climate is right now because unfortunately these companies do kind of have a one-up right now i mean almost every single job listing on linkedin has at the minimum a hundred people going for one role and that's literally for every single role and so it's really hard out here it's really competitive again i just recommend that if you are still in college get as much professional experience and certifications as you can please it is going to go a long way the people that i know today that have really good jobs out of college started early like they all started early and so I just you know again recommend that you start as early as possible or if you didn't get the memo like me and many other people that graduated from college recently I just recommend that you just get what you can um and just go into these interviews prepared and honestly more so mentally prepared right like just mentally prepared to have to go through several interviews and just you know do the extra work um and also making sure that you come across uh personable in your interviews as well I think I do a pretty good job at that um but like I said it's just hard to navigate because it's like you know do you tell them like how much of you know your true self do you expose in in these interviews you know what I mean now obviously you don't want to 
tell your hiring manager that you like i don't know smoke weed on the weekend <laughs> Like, you know, like there's certain things you don't want to say in your interviews, but yeah, I don't know, man. It's just very calculated. And unfortunately, a lot of these companies, they, they, for one, they don't want to take a chance on nobody. Like they want the perfect person. You know, they want someone that they don't have to train. And unfortunately, they, they don't just look at your credentials. They don't look at, okay, she has a degree <laughs> in this industry and she's had a job or two in this industry. She should be able to do this role. Like they, they just, they don't look at it like that anymore and it's just very very complicated and sometimes it, it you know is based on things that are out of your control like yes a lot of people get jobs because they know a person but I can say again there are interviews that I've gotten there's people that I've connected with through um people that I knew through connections and still I mean I would get the interview get to the end of the process and still wouldn't get hired and it's, it's just it's so it's so bad <laughs> It's, it's so bad that's why I just feel so defeated like yes of course like you know people will still say like oh like you just gotta keep going like just still do the interviews just still but it, it really does take a toll on you and like I said if you have intense anxiety about it like I do it, it physically takes a toll on you like I literally feel like I have to like lay down and like rest after I get through an interview and people don't understand when you're doing all of that with no reward and no return it's like you know what at this point i'm just that's why i've slowed down a bit i know a lot of people probably don't agree with me doing that i know some people probably feel like i should ramp up the you know amount of applications that i'm putting out there but it really it really feels pointless like it just feels like i'm at a point of no return honestly like it just feels like even if i put in 10 15 applications today it, and maybe i get what three interviews out of it i just i'm just i'm gonna get three no's and yes i know people are gonna say like oh if you think like that it's gonna happen save it i've literally gone into so many interviews where i was confident in the role confident in being able to answer the questions i'm like i know for a fact i can do this job i'm gonna get the job i've left i've gotten off of zoom calls being like oh i got this in the bag like this job is mine i'm gonna go ahead and start looking for apartments now and nothing happens okay so just because i might say once or twice like you know oh i'm probably not gonna get that job i'm not speaking negativity into existence existence again i've i've tried the positive mindset approach and i still do but i i have my days okay i have my days and today is one of them where i just feel like i'm putting in applications for no reason that that's just how i feel feel that's how i feel today tomorrow i'll go back to being optimistic and applying again but today that's how i feel i feel like i am putting in job applications for no reason i would be surprised to actually get an email that says congratulations you got the job because like every time i get an email now i'm like i, I already know what this what it's gonna say and i hate when people say like oh well it's because you thought that because you thought that you weren't gonna get the job so that's why you didn't get it no i just didn't get the job I just sorry I just I hate that toxic positivity I, I hate it like I'm, I'm sorry yes you should have a positive mindset especially when you're going after you know things that you want but no one is like that 24 7 you're gonna have down moments you're gonna have low moments especially when you're constantly being told no and you're constantly being rejected and so for me it's just like I've gotten rejected so many times again done so many take-home assessments and being gaslit by the hiring managers and everybody at the company telling me they loved me loved my energy felt like i'll be a good fit felt like i'll be you know good at the role just to be told no and so for me it just i just don't have the passion to sit there and apply to a bunch of jobs every single day it feels like a waste of time i feel like i just have more success and i have more going for me when it comes to like my own personal stuff so like you know again youtube and you know i'm in the process of rebranding my uh uh, my clothing line as well like I just feel like I'm better off focusing on the things that I actually see results from and even though I'm not making that much money on YouTube currently seeing the huge amount of growth I've had this year and seeing the amount of money uh, gr granted it's not a whole bunch of money but even to see consistent money coming into my bank account from YouTube I just feel like this is this is where my focus needs to be at because trying to focus on getting a job it, again it just it, it feels 
pointless. It feels pointless. It feels like I'm doing it for no reason. When I do these interviews and like I do all this stuff, it just, it, it feels worthless. It feels like I'm doing it for nothing because you do all of that and you still get told no. And again, it's like I'm, I'm being told no, you know, for a plethora of reasons. I won't say it's always because of experience, but when, whenever I have gotten those direct emails, I was like, hey, this is why you didn't get it. It always boils down to experience. But what am I supposed to do? I'm out of college. I have my degree. I have done internships. I've done like two at this point and I'm still being told that that's not enough. So it's like I'm in this weird phase where it's like I'm going after these jobs that expect you to have two to three years worth of experience, which means they're expecting me for the next two to three years out of college to do these internships that either pay very little or pay none at all. And so, and I'm 24 now, right? So you're telling me that I can't get my, a full-time job for real until I'm 27, 28? The math is not mathing. And I wish I would spend the next two to three years doing freaking internships that again don't pay well or don't pay at all that's so dumb to me i think these companies need to shift their mindset and give recent college graduates a chance y'all are over here talking about you know oh we need to make our social media pages you know fit gen z but then you won't hire gen z you'll hire millennials and baby boomers to try and copy gen z and then come off cringy as opposed to just hiring gen z because we no social media we run social media so why would you not hire somebody within gen z to run your social media especially if you're looking for things to go viral we make stuff go viral all the time i have viral videos like i don't i just i i don't get it i'm sorry i got <laughs> i got heated i'm sorry i got heated but it's just it's just frustrating like it really just feels like there's no like i don't even know what to do at this point i don't even know how to move forward like it's just and people are telling me go back to school go back to school for what if the if the issue is the lack of experience i'm gonna be in the same boat that i'm in now after i get another degree it's gonna be the same thing more school is not gonna help my problem it's not gonna help the issue the issue is experience the issue is that these companies they don't want to take a chance on any one new coming into the field what they want to do is they want to hire someone that's been in the field for 10 20 years and pay them the same salary that they would pay somebody like me it's just it's trash it's like it's just these companies need to change and i don't know if and when that will happen because you know capitalism and seeing all the stuff that's going on with ai like these companies are not looking to invest in their employees anymore they don't care they don't care about their employees they don't care about candidates all they care about is their company and, and making money and cutting costs and they don't care about how that may be affecting everybody else they don't care how it affects people's livelihoods like again even the fact that the prices of everything are increasing but salaries aren't people are out here struggling even with jobs and they don't care they don't care and so it's like at, at this point you know ever since elementary school i've always been on this energy of being my own boss making my own money and just doing my own thing i've never ever 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 had any dreams or aspirations to work for anybody else that's always been just okay i have to get a job after college so you know i can pay bills you know while i'm doing my thing on the side i've, I've always been about that about having my own stuff on the side whether it's making a bunch of money or not i've always been an entrepreneur at heart i've always had my own stuff going on because that for me that has always been the end goal the end goal has always been for me to make my own money set my own hours hours and do my own thing the purpose of me getting a job is just for me to you know move out you know uh, afford a certain lifestyle for myself and to be able to you know purchase things from myself until my own stuff takes off to where i can just do that and live comfortably on that and so if i get to a point where this youtube channel takes off and i can live comfortably i don't have to have a mansion i don't have to have three to four cars just to be able to live comfortably off of youtube i'm perfectly okay with that i have i have no problem with doing that that's that is my goal and i'm sorry right now that's the focus because the these jobs are on some bull crap and i just i don't have time i don't have time 
time to be sitting here worried about that. And one more story that I'm going to get off here because I realize I've been recording for 54 minutes and I was not intending on talking for this long, but I, just, I got so much to get off my chest. So if you're still watching this video, I appreciate that. Uh, Comment down below if you made it this far because shout out to you because I'm, I'm sure most of y'all clicked off the video already, but I got to get this off my chest. There was a company that I was going to interview for a couple weeks ago right and this company was you know based in my um in my state and this was actually a company that I had applied for months ago for a completely completely different role and I didn't get that role but then they reached out to me a couple weeks ago saying hey we have another role that opened up that we feel like you would be a better fit for would you like to have a conversation about it so this was a job that they were approaching me about that they felt I was qualified for like they wanted me I didn't even apply for this job so all rip they offered me an interview i felt really good about it day before the interview day before the interview they tell me because i guess they had one on my social media pages and that's why that's why now i'm starting to fall back on that too i really want to private my instagram but i can't really because i got sponsorships going and also if you make your page private it also wipes your analytics like they actually told me that before i made my page private because i literally was going to and they were like you know if you do that like your analytics get wiped so i'm like well i I don't want to do that so I just kept my page private but my, but, but my Twitter I'm sorry public I kept my Instagram public my Twitter is currently private essentially they were like hey we saw that you have like your own business we seen that you do content that's not allowed and so they essentially were like if you want to work for us you can't you they literally said if you want to work for us you're not allowed to make any side income at all so even if I wanted to sell bracelets down the street I wasn't allowed to do that and I was so pissed off because I'm like this is so stupid especially in this economy to tell somebody that they can't pick up another job or they can't have a side hustle is so stupid you mean to tell me that i'm not allowed to have a yard sale if i work with y'all that's so stupid and i was pissed and i had went and told some of my friends about it because i'm like this is like ridiculous and a lot of my friends were like oh well how much does it pay or you know oh we'll still take the interview anyway and again no to just take the interview anyway because again it's like if i if i don't want to if if i don't agree with the rules that they have set i'm not doing the interview I'm not, again, I'm not putting myself through physical and mental, uh, sickness when I know I'm not taking the role. That's number one. Number two, I'm literally telling you that this job wants me to give up my, my passion, my, my 15,000 subscribers. They're telling me to give that up for a job that I know it probably ain't even paying that much. And again, I know that they, they meant well, but that kind of frustrated me too. Cause it's just like, what do you mean? How much do they pay? It, it shouldn't matter how much they pay. You can't put a price on the one thing that I'm passionate about. And that makes me happy. And that gets me out of bed. Like, there's, there's no way I could put a price on that. Like, that should be a non-negotiable. I just was shocked that nobody that I told that to was like, oh, yeah, no, bump that. They're not worth it. Don't do it. Like, it just, it, it was kind of a little off-putting. But then also, you know, content creation is still a very new thing for a lot of people. And there's just some people that just, they, they, they're never going to look at it as a valid career choice. And so for them, it was like, I mean, it's a YouTube channel. Like, just drop that and pick up this job. And it's like, no, that, that's literally a non-negotiable for me but that's what i mean it's like these companies are just ridiculous oh there's another story i was going to tell too i'm sorry I, this is going on for so long <laughs> this is going on for so long but i might as well just get it all out um so there was another company that i had interviewed for like a couple days before i was supposed to interview for that other company that i just talked about i feel like that company low-key screwed me over and this is why or they they set they set me up for failure they set me up for failure because this particular company again felt really good about it they had reached out to me within minutes of me applying and so i'm thinking to myself oh like this is gonna like this is gonna go well so basically they invite me for an interview of course i say yes on the interview chain like on the email chain where they sent like the interview link and things like that they have a bunch of people listed now normally companies you know will bcc the emails meaning that they send everyone a blind carbon copy which is basically everyone gets the same email but you can't see who else they emailed it to but this particular individual i don't know if she just forgot to do this but i was actually able to see everybody on the email chain and so because of that i'm thinking okay this 
probably is the other people that work at this company. Now I see like seven emails, right? I see seven emails, like five, five to seven. I see like five to seven emails on this email chain and they all have the same email and the email is similar to the name of the company that I'm applying for. So of course in my mind, I'm thinking, well, not only is this a panel interview, which, huh, you want to talk about social anxiety? Hate panel interviews, absolutely hate them. I literally have to talk myself out of, out of not doing it every single time because I literally, Literally any interview with more than one person literally makes me want to vomit. Like I, I, I hate, 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 hate panel interviews, hate them to my core. So I saw there was a panel interview. I see that everybody has a, has like the same like ending of their email that matches the company. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm about to interview with the whole like communications team at this company. And so I'm like, you know what? Just breathe. It's going to be fine. At the very least, this will be like my one and done. Right. So I'm like, maybe this will be like the one time that I get to just do one interview because they went ahead and put everybody in the company in this one interview. So I'm like, you know what? Fine. I'm just, you know, whatever. Fine. I get there and, you know, people popping up. And again, I'm thinking these were other employees that worked at this company. Now this company, um, I don't want to give away too much about what the company is, but essentially it's a, it's like a social club, right? It's like a, it's a, it's a club that people in the community can join. And it's like a club for adults, right and so you know everyone hops on and you have this one particular person that's kind of leading the conversation and she's like okay let's go around and have everyone introduce themselves and tell me more about your experience so then it clicked I'm like, oh, wait a minute. This is a group interview, meaning that everybody in this call is going for the same role and we're having to compete against each other in the same interview. My heart just (laughs) sank. Cause again, I already don't like the interview process when it's one me and just a hiring manager. Even with the thought of like, okay, there's other people going for this role. Cause again, it's like nine times out of 10, if there's other people going for the role, more than likely not going to get it. But for me to have to sit there and try to come up with like good answers as well as try to compete and one up the next person, it's hard enough trying to come come up with my own answer. It's like, God forbid I sit there, come up with the answer. Someone else says the exact same thing I want to say. Now I got to try to sit there on the spot and come up with something better. It, it just, overall, it just was such a, whole, like, for me, for me, I just, I hated that. And I hated the fact that no one told me. Like, no one let me know that it was going to be a panel interview. Normally, when you have any type of panel or group interviews, they tell you. They're supposed to let you know. And I, I hate when I get put in those situations where I go into an interview call and there's, a, like, 15 people. And I'm like, like... You're supposed to tell me. You're supposed to tell me. And I hate that they don't tell you either. Because sometimes... Sometimes they wait until you've already confirmed a time and a date for the interview to tell you that it's a panel interview. And again, I hate when they do that because it's like I should I should be able to have the 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 decision to decide if I want to interview with all those people at one time. So I rarely ever even get like a opportunity to decide that for myself because it's usually always too late because either they don't tell me or they tell me after the fact. And so here I am sitting here interviewing with all these people no one told me that it was going to be me interviewing against all these other people and then if you guys remember earlier I said they all had the same email of this club or of this uh, organization it's because they're all members of this club I'm the only person that's not a member of this club and so I'm like y'all are literally wasting my time like you're clearly gonna hire somebody that's already familiar with your company and that already is a member one of them was like the vice president of um because you know they have like different different um chapters like throughout the country and like they were like the the vice president of the chapter in their city and I'm just like obviously I'm not gonna get the job obviously like there's already so much favoritism that goes on you already have hiring managers that don't hire you because your name is too hard to pronounce I'm like obviously I'm not gonna get this job over people that are actually a part of this organization but I still try to keep a positive mind about it I still try to you know put my best foot forward still try to answer the questions to the best of my ability and try to you know give like an extra little oh why well, I, I do this and I do that then of course shortly after I did not get the job but even in that process I was told you know hey if you move forward we'll give you like a take-home assessment and we'll go from there but I didn't even get to the take-home assessment because I was rejected and I'm like well yeah no duh <laughs> like 
obviously I, I just feel like they just they really wasted my time with that it's just like why would you even put me through this interview process with other people not tell me and then all these people are members of your organization obviously there's going to be a preference and a favoritism towards those other people it doesn't even matter if i have more credentials than them or if i'm better equipped to handle the role favoritism will always will always win in these situations and I'm, so i'm just like when me being the only person not familiar with this organization or not affiliated with it i'm like well yeah no duh i didn't get picked so i wasn't even surprised when i got that you know declined email but yeah i don't i don't know i okay i'm <laughs> i think i'm done i think i'm done ranting um this really was just supposed to be a informational video just to let y'all know like some of the things that i go through with these like hiring processes i just wanted people to go into a prepared and knowing what to expect because i'm just i feel like i've just been a deer in headlights with all these interviews like even when i talk about some of the interviews with my friends and i tell them like hey they asked me this and they asked me that even they're looking like why would they ask you that or why would they make you do that or why did they have you do this it's actually crazy out here and so yeah i just wanted to come on here let y'all know what's going on and again wishing everybody out there that's struggling right now the best for trying to find a job again i'm just thankful that youtube is doing pretty well but also if you know my youtube doesn't grow past this point i am gonna have to like heavily start looking back into jobs but yeah man i, I don't know but please believe that when people are out here telling you that it's getting ridiculous and that they're having to go through a lot to get a job it's not an exaggeration it's not people being lazy it's not people making stuff up no these companies are putting you through the ringer to even get the opportunity to get a job and even then they still don't they still don't hire you and like i said even though i do believe it's mostly gen z with this problem it is also you know people of older generations who have been in their careers for 10 to 15 years like it's not even that they're trying to pivot like they're just they're consistently been in their careers for 10 to 15 years and even them you know they're being laid off and in them trying to find another job they're not being considered either it's just it's so it's so bad and a lot of these companies just are not being realistic with what they're looking for and they're not being realistic with their job hiring process but yeah that's all i have to say thank you if you watched this whole video if you did or even if you watched just like a portion of it i would love for you to comment down below either your experience with the job process um i mean you could speak to it you know even if it's been like a while just to kind of compare and contrast how it may been for you years ago as a compared to now but i really want to hear other people's stories of you know what they've gone through like recently like at least from 2020 up until now so let me know what your experience has been with interviewing with companies and some of the things that you see popping up rather frequently let me know if you struggled at all to find a job or if it's been relatively easy for you let me know what industries you guys are in and you know how that's been with the job hiring process let me know all of that let me know your thoughts on everything that i said in the comments down below if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you guys go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and i will see you guys in the next video